Welcome to the Dare to Be Great show with Master Motivator, Spence Finlayson. Welcome to Dare to Be Great. My guest is Mr. Michael V. Roberts, the chairman of the Roberts Group of Companies out of St. Louis, Missouri. You tell Missouri. folks, learn it, get your hands dirty, you know, low sweat equity, and then, then you will know it, it becomes yours. The Roberts brothers say the key to success is putting ideas into action. They are relentless workers, always looking to make a deal. Speaking with Mr. Spence Finlayson, who is Spence Finlayson? Well, that's a good question. Spence Finlayson is a Bahamian international motivational speaker, born and raised and grew up in the Bali. Uh, my parents were Alpheus and Diana Finlayson, uh, Alpheus Finlayson Sr. I went to uh, public school, Easton Junior, and then went on to SAC, graduating in SAC in 1973. I went to the hotel training college. I didn't get to go off to university. Uh, I'm the last child in my family and I had to be home uh, with my parents, my brothers and those who were away in college. I didn't have the opportunity. But they say, once you take care of your parents, particularly your mother, God will forever bless you. And God blessed me with this gift. Um, this, I'm celebrating 30 years as a motivational speaker. 30 years with the gift. And the Bible says your gift shall make room for you and bring you into the presence of great men and women like yourself. How did you become a motivational speaker? Well, you know, I worked at uh, the Telco, the old Patelco, not BTC, as a sales rep for the Yellow Pages. And I wanted to be the best salesperson that this country had ever seen. But if you want to be a good mechanic, there's a school, a beautician, there's a school, a lawyer, doctor, there's a school. But for salespeople, there's no school. You may get a seminar here and there. And I thought about the idea of creating my own school for salespersons. And then I had an opportunity to work in Florida for Patelco. Uh, in Fort Lauderdale selling Yellow Pages advertising and I met a Jewish woman who invited me to a motivational seminar. It was $39 for the day. This is 30 years ago. It was held at Cypress Creek, uh, at one of those hotels on Cypress Creek. I, I sat in the session and during the break the guy says, do you like this? I said, I love it. He said, you believe you can do it? I said, I know I can do this. This is me. So um, they called me, invited me to take part with them throughout the U.S. and I went with them in Atlanta, Dallas, Phoenix, uh, Fort Lauderdale and so forth. And while I was making a presentation to them, they said, you sound like a motivational speaker. You sound like Les Brown. 30 years ago, I didn't know who Les Brown was. And I said, no, I'm just speaking. But they said, no, you have something there. And I realized I had a gift. I came back to the Bahamas and I started speaking. I really was trained to conduct seminars customer service and sales seminars, but while conducting them, this motivational thing came out and I realized it was my gift. And what was your next step? Um, you said you worked at BTC. I left BTC. Could you imagine that? I was making good money as a commission agent. I was ranked about in the top three of the sales force at, at Batelco at the time. And I decided to resign in 1987-88. I can never forget that. Uh, Yvonne Malcolm was my boss, Michelle Malcolm's mother. And when I told her I'm resigning, Miss M, as we used to call it, she said, aren't you serious? I said, but you're doing very well here. I said, Miss M, I have to go and follow my calling. Because the people who brought me into the business, he said, you, you can't serve two masters. You could be, either be known as a Yellow Pages sales rep who does motivational speaking occasionally, or you could be known as the motivational speaker. Make up your mind which one you want to do. You can't do the two. So it was then and there I made up my mind and I resigned from Batelco 30 years ago. And I have not looked back. Where has that taken you? That has taken me all over the world. Um, yeah, the Caribbean, uh, Central America, and of course the United States and parts of Canada. But my, my main trip when I left the Bahamas, I went to Cayman. Uh, and that's a country that accepted me with open arms in November 1993. And it was a leap of faith to go to Cayman. Because I had to go and, and, and I wanted to become international. Uh, and uh, Cayman accepted me and I used the same marketing tools that I did in Cayman for the other 22 countries in the Caribbean. So, so periodically my tour would consist of starting in St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands, going over to St. Thomas, um, St. Kitts and Nevis, Anguilla, straight down the line until I reach Aruba. And then I would come back through San Juan, Puerto Rico, come home for a week or two, then take the road again and doing it back and forth. And I enjoyed being out there. And those people accepted me with open arms. And that's where the Bible comes in. A prophet is without honor in his own home. You're back home now. How I'm long, back home. How long have you been back home? I've been back home since 19, I've been back home about um, 10 years now. But I still go out. I just go from here now. You know, I work from here. Um, I was in Belize in December. I did uh, two weeks there. 
uh, speaking for the Anglican Diocese of Belize, me and Canon Sebastian Campbell. And I, speaking of that, they just invited me back in October of this year. I'll be back in Belize uh, speaking down there. Do you feel that you're following a passion? Yes, I am. Definitely. Definitely. It comes easy. The gift comes easy. I don't sing well. I don't do much other things well. But this comes very easy to me. And I could do it in my sleep. I could do it seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and I'll still have a smile on my face. People who see me, who was in a session I did 30 years ago, come up to me and says, "Why, oh, Mr. Finn, listen, just recently when I spoke to the nurses' spinning ceremony, uh, the graduation, a lady came up to me afterwards and she said, "Why, oh, Mr. Finn, listen, it's amazing. You're not getting any older, and you still have the passion. But it's the passion. We need to have the passion. This comes easily for me because it was a gift. I didn't work at this. I, I, I worked to, 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 to perfect the craft, but the gift was given to me freely. What's next for Spence Finlayson? Well, you know, I want to conquer some other territories. I've written uh, three books already. Uh, my television show is in 22 countries in the region on Caravision, uh, Channel 271. They've been very good to me from 2008. Uh, I want to do more stuff in, 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 in the United States. Uh, and Africa. That's my next move. I want to target Africa. I was invited to Africa to speak. Uh, I didn't make the trip, but that's next on the horizon for me. Mm -hmm. What has been your message as part of the motivational speaking engagement? My message has been a message of hope. Um, there's nothing special about me. My mother was a straw vendor and my father was a carpenter. I'm the son of a carpenter. So there's nothing special about me, but when God placed a gift in you, and then you can do anything. But the message is that of hope. You know, many people are walking around hopeless today. And I, I, I encourage people to have faith. You need to have faith. I'm a man of faith. And we need to have the kind of faith that the Apostle Paul talked about. The call for those things that be not as though they were. Because faith is the oil that takes the friction out of living. When you have faith, it will allow you to turn your liabilities into assets. Stumbling blocks into stepping stones. When you have faith, your load may get heavy, but your knees won't buckle. You may get knocked down, but you won't be knocked out. You see, Beverly, I live this. I'm not a motivational speaker in the front of people. This is my life every single day. So it comes easy to me. This is not an act. And people are amazed and say, boy, you stuck with that. I remember when you started 30 years ago. On ZNS, as a matter of On ZNS. On ZNS was very good to me. People still remind me of that show. This is my brother. We used to race home for 5 o'clock on Sunday for when you were coming on. What was the name of the show? The you Possible Dream. The Possible Dream. Why did you name it that? Well, so many people were talking negatives and things that were not possible, the impossible. I figured that there's so many things that are possible within our reach, you know, and, and we can live our dreams, you know. We all can live our dreams, but you have to believe in yourself and believe in that power greater than yourself, and then let go and let God have his way in your life. God has got a plan for all of us. My gift, this is my gift, he had a plan for me. And I see it every day when I'm out in the, in the world speaking. I just, I'm just amazed and I smile and say, God, you really knew. You really knew. All right, he gave me this gift, placed it with me, and I'm accepted out there in those places. I know today there are a lot of people who feel dejected. Uh, they feel disenfranchised. They feel left out. And I see it on the streets often. Um, but I, I want you to know today that you're greater than you think you are and your life is truly full of unlimited possibilities. Stay away from the negative people because they will steal your dreams and sap your energy. Uh, I believe in neology, Beverly. I spend plenty of time on my knees. You know, people talk about psychology and sociology. I spend a lot of time on my knees and I understand my relationship with God today. You need to understand your relationship with God, however you understand him, the God of your understanding. You see, I don't just believe God, I know God for the transformation he's made in my life. Uh, when I was in SAC in, in 1970, in the 70s, you know, I would know the answers, but I'd be afraid to put my hand up. I'm so shy. And now today, I'm all over the world just speaking, but it was God, and God can change anything. God can do it. There's nothing God can't do. And one thing I know, God can't lie. But you need to believe in yourself and believe in a power greater than yourself, and then let go and let God have his way in your life. Audio Jungle.